Welcome to Revelations of a Delusional Knitter. I am Angela, your host. This is episode 121, and it is Wednesday, July 8th, 2015. Welcome if you are new. If you are returning, I thank you as always. Either way, hope you enjoy the episode. Please come and join the Ravelry group if you are not already a member and you've been watching the podcast. It's available on iTunes, YouTube, the website delusionalknitter.com, and I also post the episodes on the Ravelry group when they come out. On to declarations. Not much has been going on. I actually just realized before I started recording that I'm not actually due to record an episode right now. I just recorded about a week ago. For some reason it felt like it had been two weeks and I thought I was supposed to record this block of two days off because I work a four on two off schedule so it's not like weekend. It's not Saturday and Sunday for me. It's whatever day of the week it happens to be. But since I have stuff to show you, and I had already started prepping the podcast, I figured I'd go ahead and do it. Number one. Number two, I was going to do, I have a lot of errands to do these two days off, out and about, different stores, different things. It is so flippin' hot out today <clears throat> that after I got out of the shower, I was like, I'm not getting in my truck right now. It's not happening. I'm not going anywhere. And I guess it's supposed to be a little bit cooler out tomorrow, so I will just go and do all of my errands tomorrow. <laughs> like, I'm not leaving the house. I'm not leaving the house. Not that it's really cooler here. I just don't want to be in the car. <laughs> in the heat. Uh, so, I am recording now, and hopefully I don't melt under these hot lights. And I have the window shut because my house is usually a little bit cooler than it is outside earlier in the day, but once it gets to the afternoon, I have the computer on in here, I have the lights on, it starts getting really hot in here, so. What I figured also is I can record and then let the computer do its thing and I can go sit in the living room with fan and watch TV. <laughs> so, the other thing I have is I have another traveling monster that's visiting me. I have Scrappy, who comes from Florida, so he's very used to the heat. He's a cute little, Scrappy's a very good name for him. Um, I'm not sure which Rebecca Danger monster he is, or if he's kind of a compilation of them, but he's very cute, and, um, yeah. So, I have not done anything yet with Scrappy, but I will before I send him off. I'm not sure if it's a her or him, to be honest with you. Um, and that's about it. I've been working. We have... A, where I work now, which is one of the things I liked over where I used to work, is how they schedule overtime. And the way the person that schedules it seems to do it, which is actually kind of good because then you can just get it done, kind of does it in blocks. So, for example, I had 12 hours of overtime in the last four days, but for the rest of the month I only have one more four-hour block at like the end of the month. So, I'm done. I think that's also why I thought two weeks had gone by. <laughs> because I worked an extra 12 hours. Um, but other than that, nothing else is really going on. So on to Revelations. The Master Hand Knitter program, I have done nothing. Nothing at all. I still haven't even wound the other cascade that I got. The Sock Yarn Blanket, I have actually worked on. I did a couple of things with the Sock Yarn Blanket. I made six squares, I think, and I also went through, I have a tote over there, bin, plastic bin, and I I thought I had a system going, but clearly I did not after I went through it. So what I did was I went through all of the scrap sock yarn that I have. I took Ziploc bags and I labeled them, one through four. And I also have some labeled not used. So any, obviously, that I've not used are in the not used bags. Then I went through the rows of the sock yarn blanket that I have done. And the one through four bags, like if it was in the first or second row, that extra yarn went into bag one. If it was in the second or third row, it went into two. Once one filled up, it went into two. And so on. So now what I can do is once I get through the not used yarn, or even randomly, I can go back through the other bags. So like if I'm on row five or six, I can go back to bag one. And then I won't have colors that are the same right next to each other. That's the whole point of me doing this. So it's kind of a rotation so I can go through the yarns, not have big blocks and chunks of the same colors next to each other. So I think that will work out well. As long as I continue to put them in the right bags, because that was the problem with before. I thought I had a system, but I think after a while I just started tossing 
the yarn I was done with back in the bin and it wasn't actually going in the bag and yeah it was a mess but hopefully that will make it easier to work on it too because previously if I wanted to work a square I'd have to like pull out a yarn and then go through the blanket and see if it was next to anything that was the same color and is pain in the butt. Now if they're all separated I can just grab one if I like it next to the squares that it's going next to I can just go. So I did six squares like I said I think. Yep those are six. So this top row here let me just do it this way. This top row here I did this one was from some socks I finished recently. This was from that West Knits mystery shawl. This one I think somebody gifted to me. This one was gifted. This one was gifted. And this is <clears throat> some Knit Picks Pearlescent that I used on my Ravello sweater. So those are the squares I have done. And it's chugging along here. I am hoping to get, I have a lot of scrap yarn that's fairly sizable amounts. So you can do these bigger squares here. So I would like to start, I didn't want a bunch of big squares right next to each other, but now I'm further up, I think I can start incorporating some more big squares into the blanket too. And that will use up some yarn and um, make more blanket. So that is going well. What else have I worked on? Sophie's Universe, I have not even ripped out that round yet. Um, so I'll be doing that soon. The other thing is with Sophie's Universe, it's not that big yet, but it's getting hot, so it's kind of a pain to work on something that's <clears throat> starting to cover up your lap and everything. Bigger on the inside, I haven't touched at all. Um, Beware of Dragon's Knit Along. I mentioned that one before. Oh, I meant to pull up that pattern. Um, I showed it on the last episode, and... It's a hat knit along. It's a color work hat. I'm trying to talk and do something at the same time. Which I should be able to do, given my, that I'm a 911 operator. <laughs> it's a color work hat knit along. If you signed up by today, you get the pattern for free. And I can't find the pattern. I got the yarn. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, my voice, well, I was home alone, so I probably wasn't talking very much. Um, I didn't know my voice was so bad today. I do talk to myself and the cats, so. But I wasn't talking this much, so I didn't realize it was that bad. Here it is. I did order some yarn from Nitpix for this specifically. Have you, do you have this problem? I have this problem all the time. I must have 12 bins, like large bins of yarn, stash yarn. And then, when I go to do a project, I can't find anything that's right for that project. Do you have this problem? I have this problem all the time. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I either can't find something in the weight that the pattern calls for, or like this color work one, I really wanted to do it in a solid and a gradient, but for example, I chose Knit Picks Chroma, which I thought I had in my stash, I did, in fingering weight the pattern calls for worsted weight. So I had the perfect colors for it, the wrong weight. <laughs> Stuff like that happens to me all the time. And then I buy more yarn. So this is the Beware of Dragons hat. And it's very cool. And I will be casting that on soon. Maybe even today. I don't know. Like I said, it's really hot. So I have some Knit Picks Chroma in white. I thought of casting it on the other day, that's why the label's off. And in this lovely color, Wildflower. It's a nice pale one with some lovely colors that should hopefully change throughout the hat and look wonderful. The Little Owl, my F.O. This is by Susan B. Anderson. I've showed it on the podcast before because I bought it when I saw it because it was so cute. And there was the perfect prompt for, at Hogwarts at Ravelry for me to get it in and get some points. So I whipped it up the other day. I thought it was going to take me two days at least to knit it and put it together. Not realizing that there was actually really no sewing. There's some Kitchener stitch, but there's no sewing. So I um, actually finished it in one day. I started it in the morning and then I was doing, it was one of my days off. I was puttering around, doing some stuff, getting some stuff done, and then in the evening 
I finished up an audiobook and finished up the little owl. So this is my little owl. <laughs> it is super cute. It's really cute. And I just used some leftover Cascade 220 and some Plymouth Encore color spun from a sweater that I made. The Cascade was for some mittens I made for my husband. And some orange swish from Knit Picks left over from the Penguin Pillow. And then it's just some felt and some embroidery floss. And we have a super cute little owl. This pattern I would definitely do again. I would make more of these little guys. Um, maybe give them away to people because I don't know what I... I don't need owls all over the house. But really cute, really fun pattern. Very well written. Very easy to do. Like I said, I finished it in one day. Um, and I think that's it for Revelations. Uh, let's see. String Theory. Tour de Fleece has started. It started the other day on July 4th. And I started spinning. What I'm spinning <clears throat> is, I have two things, but what I planned on doing last year for Tour de Fleece, I had grand plans. Did not happen. So I figured I would be a little bit more reasonable this year. I have a spinner's bat. That's Coopsworth. Coopworth? <laughs> Alpaca and silk thrums. I got this from my local um, yarn shop, and I believe it's local because they have some shelves that are, I, I think this one was in one of them, that says local. <clears throat> so it's from Fibers by Christine, and yeah, I also think it's local because there's not actually like a website or anything. So. It's 0.9 ounces, which is perfect for me for supported spinning, and it's lovely. I tore up the bat. It's no longer a bat, really, because I um, stripped it, but it's really, really nice. It's super, this is perfect for supported spinning. It's fluffy clouds, lovely, drafts, awesome, super soft with the alpaca, and the silk gives it, that just fell on the floor, the silk gives it a nice sheen, and it's great. So, I have my Elwing and Nimrodel spindles that I'm spinning that on, because they're kind of, I have to, I don't know why, it's not necessary, but I think I've said before, I might have a little bit of OCD. <laughs> Whatever I do spinning, I have to do like matchy-matchy on my spindles. Like these two are very comparable, they're similar weights, they're exactly the same height, they have the same diameter flicking tip. I don't know what to say. So, I, and I also, if you haven't noticed, I will spin on one and then I will match the other one and then go back to the other one so that the cops match up. So I've been spinning up on those the last couple of days and it's going wonderfully. Like I said, that stuff drafts like butter. Let me see if I can show you my, um, the uh, crystals. I don't know how well the camera's gonna focus on them, but it is so much fun to spin on these Merkwoods. And you have that lovely, beautiful crystal you get to watch spin around. It's wonderful. So that's going well, and I have a fair amount left to spin up, but because it's so airy and fluffy, I think it looks like a lot. But when I sit here and spin, I will rip off a chunk. Oh, that chunk I just flung on the floor over there. That chunk will probably take me only 10 minutes to spin up. So it's going pretty quickly. What I wanted to do after that on my Gimli and my Shalab, which I don't have out, they're over there. I ordered some sweet rolls from the Wooly Witch in the Riddler colorway, and these look like you could eat them. These look delicious. And they're very reasonably priced. I got them very quickly. They're absolutely lovely. Look like so what I figured, and she also gives you a very nice sizable sample too. I don't know if she sends that with everyone. I've, I've, this is the first time I've purchased from her, so I don't know if it's because it's the first time, but yeah. And so my plan was, if I finish that one and it's still Tour de Fleas, or if it's not, I can do it too, then I will start on those. I don't want to be doing 18 different things. Spinning for me is a little bit different than knitting. Knitting, I'll have all kinds of different projects going. Spinning. I like to finish one project first, I think because you get used to drafting 
and coming up with a certain diameter and switching back and forth between them is it's not hard I don't want to say it's hard but I don't like doing it let's put it that way I would prefer to continue with one get it done and then move on to something else if I want to spin a different kind of yarn um, cigar boxes so I showed the one I lined the other day, I said maybe, you know, other people would be interested in them. I can sell them. I'm not going to sell them for a lot. The boxes cost me like 3 or $4. Felt is a dollar or something, so I'm thinking like 10 or $12 for a box. I did not find any like mine. They're not the slide top ones, but the box itself is pretty much the same. It is wood. It may be particle board, but it's not like cardboard or anything. It's, it's wood. They're heavy. Um, so I got uh, three of these. One of them's a little bit smaller, but like I said, these ones are flip top ones, but they still be absolutely perfect to store your spindles in. And these ones, even though they're flip top ones, I don't think I'll line the top because each box, the top has the logo on it. And that's kind of the point of why I liked these cigar boxes because they're kind of vintagey, you know, they're kind of cool. So I have three of those um, that I will line up. Here's another one. So I got different styles and colors. And this is the longer one. It's shallower by a little bit, I think, but it's longer. A little bit longer. So if you're interested in one of these and you see one that you like <clears throat> that I have here, um, let me know. And also, if you have a preference for the felt color, you know, general, red, blue, green, yellow. Um, let me know because then I won't even put them on Etsy. We'll just work it out directly and you can have one of the boxes. I will um, measure them and figure out how long they are. They're actually a little bit bigger than the boxes that I have and the spindles that I have in those boxes are nine and a half inch spindles and they still have room. So if you had a longer spindle, I think the max you could fit in there would probably be ten and a half diagonally. So that's that. Um, we have the Knit Edge giveaway. So let's do that. Of course I didn't bring up the page ahead of time. Why would I do that? Why would we do that? At least my Kindle's working today because it's so hot. My fingers are hot enough that the buttons work. That's what happens sometimes with the screen, I think. My hands are always cold. And then um, when I push things, nothing happens because I don't think it picks up on my fingers. So we have 2 through 15. We'll do random.org. number 10. So let's go see who lucky number 10 is. Number 10 is L. McCall. And that is, I know your name, I just can't think of it right now. Lori? Linda! <laughs> I'm sorry, Linda. Linda from Pennsylvania. You won that copy of Knit Edge Magazine. Congratulations. All right, testaments. I already showed you the fiber I got from Wooly Witch. I got a few more things from Knit Picks, and I'm not even going to show you all of them. It's not a lot. I got I got a couple of skeins of, um, or several maybe I should say, of uh, Wool of the Andes for doing stuffies. I got different colors because, again, inevitably, I go to make a stuffy, and I have every color but the color I want to make it. Um, Knit Picks brought back Felici for a limited time, apparently. It is my absolute all-time favorite sock yarn ever. These are always my favorite socks to wear and knit. So I got this. Do they have names on their colorways? They probably do. Oh, Gummy Bear. It's around the front. 
there. Um, gummy bear. And the other one I got, I almost bought like every color, whether I liked the color or not, but I refrained from going bananas. I do have two of these, but I'm just going to pull out one. Uh, Wizard. So I grabbed some more Felici. There's probably still some there because I just ordered this last week. So you liked Felici. They had gotten rid of it for a while, so um, there's some right now. I wonder if they're going to just keep doing that and bringing it back every once in a while because when they discontinued it, people went bananas. Um, the other thing I got, first I will show you something because that's kind of the reason I got it. Susan Claudino, I believe. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I bought one of her patterns recently because they're so <laughs> cute. And it's Jinx. And as you can see, it's very Halloween themed. I also have Patch in my queue that I would like to make one of these days. And I did actually, when I ordered some of the Wool of the Andes, I got some colors to do that. So I needed a nose and eyes, of course, that I don't have. I have like eight different types of stuffy eyes in my stash, but not that size. <laughs> so I actually just went on Amazon, and they're pretty inexpensive. They were like five or six dollars a pack, and there's quite a few in a pack. So I got black 15 millimeter eyes and black 15 millimeter noses for stuffies. And then, if you saw, Jinx has some buttons down his front, and Patch also does too. And I found, I just searched like buttons and I saw these and it's a Halloween collection grab bag. And this brand actually had all kinds of different ones, different holidays, different colors, different themes. And this I want to say was like $5 and something. And you get a load of buttons, but these ones are so cool. I don't want to pull them all out, but you can see there's like ghosts and a tombstone. And then there's all the Halloween colors, different style buttons and everything. You know, up here there's a little black cat. There's a broomstick in there. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. How much stuff is in there? Um, and I love Halloween, so I'm sure I will find all kinds of uses for these ones. But they did have, like I said, lots of different ones, too. So if you had other things and other ideas, they had loads of stuff. Um, so if you're ever looking for buttons, that's a great place to get them, and they're inexpensive. And... That's it for that. So now we're on to intentions. And I should probably pause here because I think the camera's going to run out of time. And if you can't tell, I'm going to talk a lot today, apparently. So I'm going to pause here and come back in a few. Well, you won't notice. It'll be seamless for you, but I'll be back in a few. Okay, on to intentions. <clears throat> so the Michaela shawl, I have been knitting up my sample of so I can finally release that pattern. It's just going quite well. I did have a little hiccup. I'll tell you about that, but I'm almost to the next lace portion, or the lace portion. So that's my Michaela shawl so far. If you can see this little problem here. I got to a bit where I think they joined the yarn, so there's a slubby, knotty, icky bit. So I'm just going around it and I'll have to weave in the ends afterwards. I was a little irked about that, but it happens sometimes with yarn. So that's going and that should actually be done shortly for two reasons. One, because I want it done so I can release the pattern that's all done. And two, because this week's weekly prompt for Hogwarts at Ravelry, one of the options was something pink, orange, red or something, but that is pink and orange. so. And that thread accepts whips, so <clears throat> the start date doesn't matter as long as you finish it within that week for that weekly challenge. So I'm going to get that in there for some points. And my hat that I was working on of Leading Men Fiber Arts, I have named Kira Lynn, and mine is done, and it's in test knitting. So unfortunately, because it's so hot and I put my hair up, I can't put it on my head, but... It is on my project page with horrible self-time camera pictures of me sitting here in this chair <laughs> with the hat on my head, but it came out awesome and pretty much exactly what I was wanting. 
So it's got ribbing and it's got this elongated garter stitch bits and it's got a nice shaped crown and it's slightly slouchy and it's very comfortable and I love it. So that pattern should be out soon as well, probably the end of the month or the very beginning of August I'll have this pattern out. And I love it in this yarn. I haven't even blocked it yet and you really don't even need to. I mean you probably should but um, I haven't even blocked it yet. And I was really happy with, you can see it a little bit, but I'm sure too once it's washed and blocked you won't see it at all. Because the elongated stitches, it, there's really not a large jog where the needle join was. And um, of course you can always just put that at the back of your head. But I love it. It came out awesome and I'm very happy with it. So that one will be out shortly as well. And now we're on to Harrisay. Hogwarts at Ravelry already been talking a lot about. I had a ton of entries into the thread that I'm a professor for, but it's been a lot of fun looking at them all and grading them all and everything. And I got bonus points from my little owl there, so <laughs> that was cool. Because that prompt was, um, if you've ever read the books, you know Gilderoy Lockhart had all of these books that he wrote, which was like all embellished and fake and things he never did. So the prompt was, you know, write your own book and you didn't have to like embellish or anything and I didn't but you just made up and you get bonus points if you made up a book cover like on your computer or you could even have done it on paper and taken a picture of a drawing um, so I got bonus points for the book cover but I also won the spirit award too there were a couple of us that won the spirit award for going above and beyond and um, I won that so that was awesome and that one was a lot of fun to come up with to write the story and everything. And what I did was I wrote it just like if it was an actual like book promotion. So I had like um, quotes from people who read it, <laughs> you know, like from Hagrid and <laughs> Professor McGonagall and Dumbledore. So it was a lot of fun. Um, the Pal Cow from Actually Knitting Podcast actually goes until September 1st. I thought it was not that long before and I think I said the wrong date previously so I just wanted to let everybody know that's actually going until September 1st. Keep on knitting on socks 2015. The last quarter ended at the end of June so on the board I will draw for a winner and post that shortly and get a prize out for that. Um, I did want to mention Pacifica Yarn Company by Argyle Sheep. I was contacted and asked if I could spread the word and I checked it out and it looks awesome. So I said absolutely and I believe it comes from the same people that do like the 30 day sweater and um, stuff like that. Yarn Nation. I believe there. I could be totally wrong. I should probably have checked that out before I opened my mouth. Um, so what it is, is it's essentially a Kickstarter for a new brand and base of yarn. And the base is going to be called Zephyr, and it's a cotton and wool blend because the people doing this are out in California where it's really hot and they don't need wool or alpaca sweaters. So you can check it out and you can donate to them and you will get uh, whatever package you decide to go for but you'll actually get something in return you'll get um, some yarn or a tote bag or whatever it is that they have and their color line is fabulous the little pinnet thingamajigger is stuck on there but there's an example of their color line that they're preparing and they're also working on a gradient as part of the Kickstarter, so that will be like a limited edition kind of a thing, so if you order that one for your donation, I don't think they'll be available after this, so you'll get a unique, wonderful skein of yarn. And the estimated delivery times for these are in 2016, because they have to get all the funding and then make yarn and do all that stuff, but there's plenty of different ranges of donations you can make, you know, ranging from 25 up and up. So there's plenty of opportunities if you're interested. And I will put a link to that in the show notes so that you can see and read all about it. But I thought that was pretty cool and I think I'm going to order that gradient yarn because it looked really nice. 
And I have some Ravelry patterns for you. Um, it is Shark Week. So there was a pattern out that I bought. There was a coupon code. I'm a sucker for coupon codes. And it is called Shark Bite. And it's a colorwork sock. And it's pretty flipping cool. It's one of the cooler ones I've seen. That is Shark Bite. And the back also is like the other side of the shark and stuff. So it's really, really cool. Let me see if they have a picture of the back. They do. Oops. There's the back. So I ordered that, of course, as usual. Don't have the yarn for it. Gonna have to order something. Do you see any gray yarn behind me? I don't. <laughs> oh, it drives me bananas. And the other one, which I think I've shown before, but I finally ordered it because there was a coupon code. And that's Iron Maiden. And it's a um, shawl. A very open, lacy shawl. And I had it in my favorites forever, but with the coupon code, I finally went ahead and bought it. So, yeah. And those are your Ravelry patterns for today. So, um, I mentioned before, but I'm using it quite a lot, and it's going quite well, my bullet journal. I'm really liking that. Really liking that thing. Um, if you've never heard of it and you didn't see the other podcast episodes, if you go to bulletjournal.com, it explains. It's just a system that's not chronological, and it's an indexing system for like a to-do list and monthly calendars and things like that, but it really works pretty cool. I like it a lot. And now we're on to Delusional Jabber. I haven't done much of anything, any other types of crafting recently, um, at all. <laughs> Reading, I finished Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and I'm now on to um, Prisoner of Azkaban. And actually, since I worked so much the last couple of days, I'm already at like 60% on my Kindle, and I just started it on like the 5th. <laughs> so, <laughs> that one will be done soon. I also finished an audiobook, A Plague Upon Your House, that's Zombie Fallout number 2 by Mark Tufo. And that one was really good. There's a lot of books in that series, actually, so if you check them out, if you check out the first one and you like it, which I guess I, I think I finally figured out something that it's similar to in the delivery and sense of humor, um, the Dresden Files. If you like that, you'd probably like this series. The other one I've been listening to again, which I kind of put on hold for a little while, is um, Ready Player One. And again, what is the author's name? Clive Owen? I'm probably totally wrong. But it's narrated by Will Wheaton, <laughs> so that one's really good. And TV, I'm caught up on Wayward Pines. That one's really going well. I'm liking that one a lot. I did not realize, but I noticed the other day while I was scrolling through On Demand, Extant is back on, so I started watching that one again. I finished Outlander. And this podcast is rated G, so let's just say the last two episodes were absolutely horrifying. <laughs> If you watch Outlander, and you've watched those, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I am interested now to read the books, because there is a little tidbit after the episodes, like Inside Look, and um, it seems to follow the books a lot. You can let me know if you've read the books, if um, the TV show does follow it quite a lot, but it, it appears that it does from what they talk about in that um, outtake, in this not an outtake, behind the scenes thing. Um, and that's probably about all I've been watching recently, because I haven't had a whole lot of time, like I said. And at work, I've just been reading. I haven't been watching anything really at work. Uh, the internet connection there is horrific. <laughs> yeah. So, and there's some Wi-Fi, and I don't know where it's coming from, but you could be sitting here and have a signal, and turn like this and have no signal. So, <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. So... We're allowed to bring our Kindles and tablets and stuff, but um, it's spotty at best sometimes. So The Kindle works perfectly fine because it doesn't require anything. I'm just reading a book. And I think that's about it for this episode. So I thank you for joining me. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I hope you are not sweating. I am starting to melt in here with the window closed and the lights on me. 
And I'm going to go get this podcast all set up and going and probably go watch some TV and have a nice cold beverage with some ice cubes in it and sit in front of a fan. So thanks again for joining me. Happy knitting and spinning.